Okay, welcome to part 11. Um, again, this is going to pretty much follow on from where we left off last time, which is where we're going to start creating these two functions. So the first one we're going to create is the validate conversation ID. All this is going to do is simply check to see if the um, user is a member of the given conversation. So it's going to return false in two situations, either if the user isn't a member of the conversation or if the conversation doesn't exist. So we're going to define this function in our private message backend file. Oh, actually, something we forgot to do in the last part is add a comment about what this function does. So it's pretty obvious actually, but it just let's just say it fetches a summary of the conversations. I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to add this validation function right at the bottom of the code. Um, the reason I'm doing this, by the way, at the bottom is, by the way, uh, I said that twice, is that I generally do fetching functions first, then creating, then updating, which we don't have any of um, yet, anyway, um, and then validation right at the bottom. I don't know why, it's just something I've picked up and then always stuck with. Anyway, so what we're going to do is create a new function, which is going to be called validate conversation ID take a conversation ID as its parameter. I should have abbreviated conversation to something because it's taken quite a while to type out. Anyway, um, so what we need to do is uh, make sure that this is safe for use in SQL before we use it. So we're just going to do conversation ID equals int conversation ID. And then we're going to run some SQL, which is actually a little bit long. Um, not really complicated, but it's not really a one-line type thing. So we're going to create an SQL variable and set that equal to a string. So the query we're going to be running is a select query. We're going to be counting the number of rows because we just need to know if this data is in the table. So we're going to count one, which is just a quick way of counting the number of results effectively. Um, we're going to be selecting this from the conversations members table. Done that again. And we'll be selecting the, um, well, we're going to use a few conditions here. So, first we need to make sure that this, um, well, we need to use the conversation ID provided. So, effectively making sure that this conversation exists. So, where conversation ID is equal to the conversation ID and also you need to make sure that this user is a member so and user ID is equal to the user ID stored in the session from when they logged in and also we don't want to include deleted conversations so conversation wait yep equals zero Okay, so when we run this, we'll either get 1 if the conversation is valid, or false if it isn't. So obviously first we need to run the query, so we'll do result equals MySQL query of SQL. And then down here, we're just going to return the result of a check, and that check is going to be MySQL results, so this is actually fetching the result from the query. Um, and we're fetching from the query result and the zeroth row or the first row and we're going to check this to see if it's equal to 1 if it is equal to 1 that means the conversation ID is valid and if it's not that means it's not valid which is the, conversa the, uh, the condition we're checking so if we um, go back to our inbox page uh, this check here is effectively checking to see if any of these conversa uh, conversations conditions are not true so if the user, well, if the conversation ID doesn't exist, or the user isn't a member of that conversation, or if they are a member but they deleted it, um, this will return uh, false. Okay, so that's basically that. So the next thing we need to do is create a method to actually delete our conversation. So we're going to add this just below this here. Actually, let's just quickly comment what this does. Um, checks to see if that given user is a mem member of the given conversation 
close enough. So down here, I'm going to create a new function called um, delete conversation. And this is actually quite a complicated sort of function because it has to make sure that the data is only removed um, once all of the users that are members of that conversation have marked it as deleted. So there are a couple of ways we can do this. Um, the way I've chosen is, well, I'll show you the way I've chosen. I'm just going to copy this line down because we need to apply the same check, uh, same um, data uh, value, you know, sanitation, um, whatever, to make sure that the conversation ID that we pass into this function, or are about to pass into this function, is safe for use in SQL. And then we're going to run a little bit of SQL. So the SQL is going to be in this SQL variable again, because it's, again it's a little bit too long for a single line query. Um, and we're going to select the value of the deleted um, column from the members table where the conversation ID is the one specified. So this is effectively, um, oh, why can't I type select? This is effectively going to be um, if, well, I don't mean if anything, it's going to be the list of who deleted it, I guess. Um, so anyway, I'm going to select the conversation deleted column from the conversation members uh, table, and we're going to be selecting where the conversation Nope, where the user ID is not equal to the current user because we don't really care about the current user we're going to act based on all of the other users so if all of the other users have marked it as deleted we're going to delete the data because we are now marking it as deleted and then everyone has so we can delete it and if all of the other, well at least one of the other users haven't marked it as deleted we're going to mark ourselves as deleted because then when they mark it as deleted it'll remove the data then Anyway, so we're basically just discounting ourselves by adding this check here, and oops, getting that right. So session user ID. Ah, okay, and there we go. And also, obviously, we need to be counting or getting the data deleted, um, where the conversation ID is obviously the conversation specified. So we're just going to add a AND here for the conversation ID. And it's got to be equal to the conversation ID variable. Okay, so that's our SQL. And what this is getting is a list of, like I said before, a list of ones and zeros, true or falses, um, as to who's deleted the conversation effectively. So say for like 10 users and five of them deleted it, you'll get five ones and five zeros. Now, we don't necessarily need, need all that data. What we need is the um, number of distinct values. So one way, one way, we, can do, one, one way we can do this is um, by using the distinct keyword, um, which does have an N in it somewhere. Um, there, I hope. <laughs> um, and what this does is effectively the same as PHP's um, array unique um, function. Um, it only returns unique values from the column or from the selection. Um, so if, say, like the same example, 10 people and 5 have deleted it, this won't return 5 ones and 5 zeros, it'll return 1 1 and 1 0, which is just a bit less data than we, you know, a bit less data really. Um, so then we can use this to, well, obviously, first we need to perform the query, which we're going to do by um, using the MySQL query function. I'm going to store the result in a variable called result. Result. There we go. Ah, that's not what I meant. There we go. Um, and then we can get the value of this and check to make... Well, we can get the number of rows, and if that is 1, and the actual result is 1 as well, that means all of the values, however many there are, are 1. So this sort of saves us having to loop over all the values, basically. So what we're going to do is check to make sure that, well, we're going to check to see if, I guess I should say, MySQL num rows of results is equal to 1, and 
the actual results results zero is equal to one as well and if it is if both of these things are true um, i.e. there's only one row which means there's only one distinct value and that value is one that means everybody except me has deleted this conversation so then we can go ahead and delete the uh, appropriate rows from the various tables so we do that by using a well let's use three MySQL queries so we just do the MySQL query function three times and the SQL that we're going to be running is pretty short we can do this in line and it is delete from table name so conversations will be the first one where the conversation ID is equal to just the conversation ID so like so I'm just going to copy this down for the other two tables and change conversations to the table name so conversations becomes conversations no it becomes conversations members with one M and down here it becomes messages okay so that will actually remove all of the data related to the given conversation ID so what we want to do if all of the users haven't marked it as deleted yet is what I explained earlier really um, but we need to run some SQL to update the current users value of the conversation deleted column so again this is fairly straightforward but we're going to define it in an SQL variable because it's a bit long it's about the same as the select distinct query anyway so this is an update query and we're going to be updating the conversations members table and we're going to set the value of conversation deleted equal to 1 which means they have deleted it where the um, conversation ID is the one specified so that's just this okay and then we also need to only do this for the current user so and user ID is equal to session user ID and obviously this query needs to be executed so we just need to add a MySQL query for that okay so that should be our delete conversation function pretty much complete so the last thing I'm going to do is just comment what this does so deletes or marks as deleted a given conversation okay so we should be ready to test this out now so let's just go to our browser and we'll just do a reload to check for syntax errors of which there were none so we'll just click on the little cross and MySQL numbers expects for one to be resource boolean given so what's happened here is um, we've deleted our data but not really meant to I think <laughs> um, but well anyway let's um, just see what's happened so uh, uh, MySQL num rows expects parameter 1 to be resource boolean given would suggest that this select distinct query has failed and that I believe is why that should be deleted not deleted or wait hang on no yeah that's right what did I have before delted hmm. anyway let's go back to our well let's just look see what's happened to the database um, this will have returned false which means this should have happened so we should be able to just update it manually so let's go to our table and log back in yeah I've set myself as deleted so let's just edit this row and set this to zero and if I just go back and reload that's still there okay so we can try again I just click cross again and now there are no errors and my conversation will have been deleted hopefully so let's just look at the table again and hit reload uh, that's not really what I, what I wanted to reload so yeah there you go you can see I've been set to 1 for me and if I log out of the message system and log in as Bob um, which I can't really do easily okay there we go if I log in as Bob whose password I hope was that nope what was Bob's password again um, I don't I have no idea I'm going to have to update it <laughs> bear with me
Okay, I've fixed Bob's password, so let's just try and log in again. And there we go. So you can see that this message still appears for me, uh, well, for Bob. So if Bob deletes this, and we check the table, we should see that the row has now been deleted, and the members table has been deleted too, and so has the messages. So there you go, that's our delete method working, and I'm going to end this here, and then in the next part, we're going to move on to the view conversations page, which is where we're going to allow people to actually add messages. Okay, so thank you for watching, and come back for part 12, I think, it might be 11, 12, I think it's 12.